What's up, Internet? Today, God bless it. Um, today, we're going to put a new top end in the YZ250 engine. Uh, I've never done this with the engine out of the frame. This will be the fifth top end I've put in the bike or put on the engine, however you want to say it, whatever. Um, but the first time with the engine out of the frame. Uh, so one thing I'm worried about is like breaking the head bolts loose and probably more so the cylinder bolts, the engine twisting as I'm trying to break them loose. Um, you know, obviously I've, I've got air tools, but there's one bolt that's underneath this cover here that kind of hard to get at. Um, so we'll see. We'll just see how it goes. Like I said, this is a first. I like to break these head nuts loose just in the opposite well the same way you put them on uh, the manual tells you to put them on in a cross pattern and i think that's just so you don't warp anything all right they're all pretty loose the other thing that i did prior to starting this video is i cleaned the engine where things separate so um you have Gosh, I'm pointing in all these different places, but yeah. we'll start with the reed valve cage, you know, so I cleaned the edge really, really well. So, you know, best as I could so that when we pull the reed valve off, you know, you don't have any dirt that falls into the bottom of the engine. So same around the base of the cylinder and then your exhaust valve stuff. There's, there's a cover here, there's a cover on this side. Basically, so as we pull things apart, dirt doesn't fall into the bottom end of the engine tell you what it's so satisfying to get the frame almost as clean as it was when it was new love these engines they're so simple and simple is good for two reasons um, one the cost to redo the top end is like 200 bucks that's cheap my friends cheap um, if you consider redoing an entire top end on a four stroke you have camshafts you have cam chains you have cam chain adjusters you have um, valves and valve seats and tappets and shims and it, the list just goes on and on and on not that you need to replace all of those things with a top end rebuild but you replace a lot of them Woo! and when a top end explodes on a four stroke whew, man it is pricey so um Simple means cheap, and it also means a lot less time doing a top end. There's less tools involved, there's less labor involved, there's less cost involved. So I think this is pretty cool. So if we go to the intake side, you can see there's a hole in the piston right there. So let me move that up. You can see the connecting rod and change the angle. You can kind of maybe see the crank, but as we bring the piston down to the bottom of its stroke, you can see this hole here. So that's for lubrication. So there's no oil sump in this engine. There's no oil pump to circulate the oil. You have pre-mix that gets mixed with the gasoline as it comes through the intake here. Um, as the piston comes down to the bottom of its stroke, it'll go through that hole and through that hole is the wrist pin. So that's how the wrist pin that holds the connecting rod and the piston together, that's how it gets lubrication. And then um, we've got ports here on either side and there's one port here that's made me really hard to see. But that's how intake gets into the combustion chamber. And then as the piston comes up, those ports then are closed off it gets compressed and pow. The next piece we're gonna take off is this cover right here. And remember that exhaust valve that's in here somewhere. You can kind of see it's, it's, it's a flap. It moves up and down, opens and closes the port based on the RPMs of the engine. Um, so a lot of the mechanics that move that up and down are behind this cover and there's a little arm. We're gonna take that off.
think we're ready to take the piston off. Before we do that, I've stuffed some rags to keep anything from falling into the crankcase. Uh, and really the only thing that would actually fit down there is um, there's a, there's a little, it's, it's kind of like a circlip, but it's not really a circlip and it's too dark. Hang on a second. Uh, you can kind of see it in there, but there's a ring, kind of like a circlip, one on each side, and that keeps the wrist pin from, you know, falling through. And that would be bad. So we're ready to take that out, but we want to stuff these rags in here before we do that so it doesn't fall into the crankcase because that would suck. We've got the engine back in the frame and uh, we can now reinstall our brake pedal which is hanging down here because it blocks the swing arm pivot bolt which actually goes through the engine so we've been just letting this thing here this thing here the brake pedal we've been letting the brake pedal hang forever because we knew that we needed access to the pivot bolt once we we're ready to put the engine back in the frame because it actually slides through this piece here Anyway, all right, so that's all done. That's back in there. My biggest challenge now um, to actually like torque all the engine mounting bolts and um, torque the remaining swing arm bolts, but that's, that's neither here nor there. So we're just about ready to install a new piston. So there's your connecting rod. And before we do that, I wanted to show you guys how to check your ring gap. I think it's, you know, it's something that's actually really easy to check but I think, I feel like a lot of people don't do it or skip that step, but oh, my knees, my knees. Here's all the new gaskets, head, base. We've got new reeds that will go on the reed cage. And here's a wrist pin bearing. Here's the wrist pin. Here's the piston. Uh, one thing that's cool is Wiseco, I don't know if everybody does it, but Wiseco puts an arrow, a directional arrow. So, the, ah, the, this way, okay. This arrow points towards the front of the, of the motorcycle. Um, and so you can see the full skirt on the exhaust side. Uh, the another, another way that you can tell which direction the piston is supposed to go in is by looking at the skirt on the intake side. So remember earlier I was showing you how uh, with the two stroke, your lubrication comes from the premix you put in the gasoline. So as the gas is flowing, um, through the intake in this uh, hole here is access to the wrist pin. So the wrist pin goes through here. Um, so this guy goes through there. So it's in there like that. And so it gets lubrication through here. Your crank gets lubrication down here. So if you installed your piston backwards, uh, you'd be screwed because your crank wouldn't get any lubrication. Your wrist pin wouldn't get any lubrication. Um, the skirt would just completely block all intake. I mean, the engine wouldn't run if you installed it backwards. Uh, anyway, just details to note. We'll get to that in a minute. Before we get to that, we're going to check the ring gap. So we've got our new Wiseco piston rings. Now this is a two stroke, so there's no oil rings. Uh, we just got these two compression rings and, uh, it's really quite simple. So we're just going to stick that guy into the cylinder and then I'm going to take the piston and just push it down. I don't know. 10 millimeters, quarter, half inch, something like that. And then let's see if we get a good look at that. So we've got the piston ring in there. You can kind of see it, hopefully. Ring end gap. So we're looking at 16 
tens, hundreds, thousands, sixteen thousands? I don't know how to read that. We're looking at point zero one six to point zero two two. Get that camera. All right, so the point zero one four fits in nice and snug like it should. The point zero one five is kind of tight and our minimum level is 0 0.016. However, they don't specify a minimum on service limit. The service limit where they say replace the ring is on the gap being too large. All right, another thing I'm gonna show you guys in the manual is um, they actually recommend using 400 to 600 grit sandpaper on your cylinder walls and on your head too, but that's really just if it needs like some resurfacing. So this head's pretty clean. Uh, not a lot of carbon buildup in there for 50 hours. And I think that's largely because I run 50 to one, well, actually 45 to one. It's like three ounces to every gallon of gas. Three ounces are pre-mixed every gallon of gas, which, which is around 45 to one. And I picked 45 to one because it's easy math. 50 to one is like 2.8. So it's just, it's just a little bit harder to measure 2.8. It's easy to measure three. Anyway, um, I think if you are running, you know, um, Richer than that, a lot of people swear by 32 to one because most of these manuals will recommend 32 to one. Uh, to me, it's just access. You're just, you're just gonna have extra carbon buildup in your, in your head, maybe foul plugs from, from now and then. Uh, I can't even tell you the last time I fouled a plug. I don't know if I've ever fouled a plug on this engine. And I've ran 50 to one or 45 to one um, on, on multiple bikes. This bike's 10 years old. I've never had a, a still a stock crank bearing. Um, it, it's fine. It's plenty of lubrication. You don't need to run richer than 50 to one. Okay. So I'm going to take some 400, 600 grit sandpaper, knock the glaze off. The cylinder walls look really, really good. There's no scarring or anything like that. So we're just going to kind of knock the glaze of the last 50 hours off of the cylinder walls. And then I'm going to wash it in a bucket of hot soapy water clean I gotta take this gasket off make sure that the gasket surfaces are clean so there's a little bit of buildup here I'm gonna knock off and then do the same thing on the base of the engine and then we can uh, install the piston rings and get the cylinder back on the engine I like to take a ratio right and pour a little premix in here. I've already got a little bit, I'm just gonna add a little bit more. And I will use this to lubricate the wrist pin and the wrist pin bearing for the piston um, as I assemble. And then um, also a little bit of oil on the cylinder, a little bit of oil on the rings and the, and the piston. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I torque every bolt and nut on this bike to spec according to the service manual. That'd be an absolute fabrication. However, if you're going to 
torque to spec, anything on the bike, for the love of God, let it be your engine components, cylinders, heads, um, clutch components, suspension components, your shock linkage, your swing arm pivot bolt, all of that stuff. I always make sure that I torque to spec. I don't know how you can torque these with a torque wrench. Maybe they make a torque wrench that's like a wrench that can fit in here, but I don't know of one. So what I do is I get my 14 millimeter, you know, for this bike and um, a wrench that basically gives me like the same length as my torque wrench. And then after that, it's just kind of feel. So I just try and feel how much leverage or how much pressure I'm putting on the torque wrench. And I just try and apply the same amount of pressure with a wrench or something that is of the same length. And um, that's how I get the two back nuts because damn, I don't know how to get those with a torque wrench. So if anybody else does, leave a comment down below because I could use some help there. And with that, we're gonna call this video. So um, it's all pretty much done. I think we still gotta put the power valve cover um, on, on the side there and reattach the little arm that opens and closes the valve. But that's like, that's like a couple of minutes. And I think there's enough footage of me tightening bolts. You don't need to see any more of that. Uh, let's see. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, people would probably put this in the advanced, you know, skill set category of should I attempt this job but the, the reality is there's nothing hard about this um, doing a top end on um, on a on a 252 stroke and and you know not even on a four stroke really for that matter there's more special tools on a four stroke and there's more steps and there's more pieces and parts and all that but at the end of the day um, you don't need for the two stroke, you certainly don't need any special tools for the four stroke. You would need like a valve spring compressor. Cause even if you're not replacing the valves at a minimum, you want to take them out, um, decarbon them, clean them, polish them up, all that good shit. And, uh, but for the 252 stroke, I think the most advanced or special of special tools that I use was a feeler gauge to check the ring end gap. And you know, the reality is when you're ordering a top end rebuild kit for a specific make your model bike, the rings are generally pre-gapped and you know, it doesn't hurt to check them. It's super easy. I showed you that in the video. So you might as well just check it. But if your end gaps are off by, you know, more than a couple thousands, I double check your order and make sure you got the right kit for the right year making model. They shouldn't be that far off. Um, yeah, you know, I would say anybody can do this. You know, I say that about all my videos. If I could do it, you can do it, trust me. What I would caution you against is, while I say there's nothing really difficult about this job, I would say the difficult part to this is all the details. There's just tons, tons, and tons of little details. Do not attempt this without the service manual. Reach, read each and every step multiple times and don't skip any steps. Don't take anything for granted. Do everything the manual says and do it in the order the manual says to do it. Um, there's, there's just so many little details that, um, yeah, don't even try it without the service manual, especially if it's like your first time, but it, it's not that hard. It's not that hard, especially on the 252 stroke. So, um, don't be too intimidated by the fact that you're pulling a, you know, a, the head and cylinder off and putting new piston and all that, right? Just take your time, pay attention to every step, pay attention to the details and, uh, good luck. <laughs> I'll find out if I did a good job, if it runs. <laughs> Keep it upside down. We'll see you guys later. Bye.